The Super Heavy is the lower stage of the most powerful rocket ever built, the Starship. It produces an incredible amount of thrust to support the Starship in missions leaving Earth. All of us recognized it, but how exactly does SpaceX make it real? Here's a sneak peek of SpaceX's The Hidden Weapon Inside Super Heavy. Elon Musk has great ideas for space exploration, and one of his lifelong goals is to establish a human settlement on Mars. Musk will require a powerful spaceship capable of lifting big payloads to transport all the essential goods from Earth to Mars in order to transport colonists to the Red Planet. The spacecraft must be capable of traversing the immense distance that separates two worlds. The Starship will be used for additional purposes, like transporting bulk freight and crew to Earth's orbit or other regions in space. It will also transport NASA astronauts to the moon's surface from its orbit. Musk has also proposed that starships be used as unique space refueling stations for other starships embarking on extended interplanetary journeys. This is why SpaceX is going all out with the super heavy design. With a gross mass liftoff of over 3 million kilos, it'll be the most powerful launch vehicle ever. Standing up, you'd have to take a step back to view the top of the booster, which is the height of a 23-story building. It's 9 meters in diameter and composed of steel, just like the 50-meter tall spacecraft that rests atop it. But like everything else, the best is always hidden inside. This relates to the heart of the Starship Super Heavy booster. Known as the engine section, the aft end of Super Heavy is likely where the fate of early booster prototypes will lie. For the most part, Super Heavy is just a colossal duo of steel propellant tanks that is, to an extent, even simpler than its smaller Starship upper stage, which needs two types of Raptor engines, flaps, and a bevy of maneuvering thrusters, and more. However, at the booster's base, SpaceX must design, fabricate, and assemble a nightmarishly crowded and complex mechanical structure capable of mounting, fueling, and powering 33 Raptor engines. Simultaneously, that structure and all associated plumbing must withstand the force and pressure of over 2,000 metric tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen and 7,500 tons, which is 16.5 million foot-pounds of thrust that the Raptor can generate. And that's the bare minimum, though. Beyond the extraordinary mechanical stress, it must withstand Super Heavy's thrust section also needs to be able to survive the hellish, violent environment created by almost three dozen powerful rocket engines on one side while the structure is effectively half submerged in a cryogenic fluid, subjecting the puck and dome to brutal thermal conditions. Last but certainly not least, the exterior of Super Heavy's thrust structure must be able to survive the mechanical and thermal hell of hypersonic atmospheric re-entry with zero cushioning of the blow. The forces involved are difficult to imagine. At full thrust, Super Heavy Booster 7's 33 Raptor engines will likely produce more than 7,590 metric tons, or 12.1 million foot-pounds of thrust, making it both the largest and most powerful rocket booster ever built or tested. At full thrust, those 33 Raptors will consume more than 17 metric tons, or about 38,000 pounds, of cryogenic liquid methane and oxygen equivalent to around 10 Tesla Model 3's worth of propellant every single second. Including smaller secondary runs for each Raptor engine, Super Heavy's engine section will likely contain miles of plumbing for highly flammable, explosive, and high-pressure liquid and gaseous methane and oxygen. All 33 Raptors also need to be connected to Super Heavy's power supplies and avionics systems, demanding still more miles of wiring. Note that the booster's orientation can be controlled using coal gas thrusters, fed with evaporated propellant inside the tank. The booster's separation from the spacecraft is done by the Raptor's engines and releasing the latches. Luckily, the version 2.0 Raptor engine is a major improvement in simplification, presumably making life a bit easier for the engineers that have to design Super Heavy's hellish engine section plumbing and the technicians that have to fabricate and assemble it. However, there's just no getting around the fact that a single rocket booster with dozens of engines is going to have an extraordinarily complex thrust section. So, so we recognize SpaceX has went through so much trouble to get to where Super Heavy is today. 
Following the hugely successful historic landing of Starship SN15 on May 5th, SpaceX started races to get the Starship ready for the first orbital flight, and it is turned to conduct tests on the Super Heavy itself. In fact, SpaceX began work on the Super Heavy booster stage in the autumn of 2020 with Booster 1, BN1, now renamed Booster 1. With the stacking of the first prototype completed in March 2021 in the High Bay Vertical Assembly Building at the company's South Texas launch site. At that time, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk announced that BN1 was a production pathfinder, a prototype or test unit not intended for flight testing, but used to determine how best to produce future vehicles. Instead, BN1 was scrapped in favor of moving forward with BN2, with the goal of having BN2 on the orbital launch pad before the end of April 2021. A second designated B2.1 was scheduled to fly in June 2021. However, both BN2 and B2.1 were reclassified as test sections in May of 2021. In early June 2021, B2.1 was moved to a launch pad to undergo stress testing using hydraulic rams and then was scrapped. After that, the star of the show is the two super heavy prototypes that appear. That's Booster 3 and Booster 4. The first static fire test was conducted on Booster 3. B4 underwent another cryogenic proof test and a full load cryogenic proof test. Unfortunately, both of them were then retired for the next generation, B7. So far, B7 is still aiming to launch in the first Starship orbital flight with Ship 24. Prototype vehicles were stacked together last week atop the orbital launch pad at Starbase, SpaceX's South Texas facility. SpaceX has already performed a number of tests on Booster 7 and Ship 24, but more await the Starship duo before they can take flight. And the company plans to check the remaining boxes in a decidedly measured fashion. We're proceeding very carefully. If there is a rud on the pad, Starship progress would be set back by about six months. SpaceX founder and CEO Elon Musk tweeted on Sunday, October 16th, using his preferred euphemism for an explosion. SpaceX has already performed brief static fire tests with both Ship 24 and Booster 7, firing up their powerful Raptor engines while keeping the vehicle anchored to the ground. In fact, the company's ignited all six of Ship 24's Raptors simultaneously. But Booster 7's static fires have involved just a handful of the vehicle's 33 Raptors at once and none of its ignitions have occurred while Ship 24 sat atop it. The coming weeks are likely to see a variety of tests that feature the full Starship stack. Fueling trials will pave the way for increasingly ambitious static fires, which will culminate into a full 33-engine firing of Booster 7. And Elon Musk has expressed confidence that the mission could launch as soon as next month. But SpaceX isn't beholden to such an aggressive schedule in Sunday's tweet makes that all clear. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section. Everyone's support is motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.